What's up, guys? Welcome to the Wedding Pros podcast dedicated to getting wedding creatives paid. Today, we're talking about creative risk in the wedding industry. Before we get started today, I just wanted to encourage you to, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, give us a like, a comment. If you're listening on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify or checking out our website, theweddingprospodcast.com, um, we encourage the support and it is very helpful to us. So thank you so much for those that subscribe. And if you like what we do and you want us to do it more, um, you should subscribe as well. So today we're going to be talking about it's kind of like a, a little more of a kind of a abstract concept than we normally would discuss, but I think it's relevant to where we are personally right now, which is creative risk. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you and I, I mean, lately have been um, traveling quite a bit and figuring out a couple um, newer um, projects. And so, um, yeah, when we were talking about what we are going to talk about this week, we were like, you know, let's let's be kind of be, keep it real, right? You know, and 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 where we are, and kind of the the things that we're encountering um, that are exciting and also um, possibly intimidating, um, and that that is creative risk. You know, I think when we first started Stop Go Love, we kind of you know we're like, this is a brand new thing for us. Let's try to do wedding films. We'd never done wedding films before. There's no like preconceived notion, I think, of what we were gonna make. Yeah, really. it yeah. Was like, do it, a good job. It was just like, well, you know, we saw somebody who was doing something that we thought was great, still motion at the time, and we were like, I think we could do something like that. And um, so we bought the cameras, we spent a lot of money, we invested in it, and crossed our fingers and hoped that we were good. And then um, the first video that we did was pretty good. And then from there, we just got better and figured things out along the way. And so um, we're kind of at a similar crossroads where um we are figuring out a newer uh wedding film product and so with that you know i think we both talked about it and we're like hey you know this is pretty similar to when we first started stop go love and similar kind of challenges it's like um i feel like where we were when we started and i feel like this is how if you're listening and you're starting out this is a great time for you because you don't know what you're getting into and so you're going to take a lot of risks naturally yep. that will free you up to create something amazing the more you do this i think the harder it is to take risks because you know how easy it is to just do the same old thing and that mm -hmm. you can keep the money coming in yeah and whatever it is you yeah. know <clears throat> and i think i was thinking back and and what we did when i've discussed it previously it was like oh it was a risky mm -hmm. of course you know like it didn't feel risky and then i think back on it now and it's like especially when I see the advice people give about how you should structure your weddings and, and how you should structure your, your teams and how you should structure your pricing. And like, we basically do all of it opposite of almost everyone I hear. There's mm -hmm. some people who do it the way we do it, but in general, like most of the industry leaders would say, don't do it the way that we do it. Mm -hmm. And I look and I'm like, I guess it was kind of risky. We just didn't even identify the risk. I think now what we want to make is I can, I, I can like identify the risk and it feels very vulnerable. It feels like um, we're about to make a more high end product. And, and this is nothing negative about what we do with Stop Go Love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like, yeah, I think you're right. I think now we can actually evaluate the risk because we know what we're getting into and we've actually know the right questions to ask the right people in the part of the industry that we're trying to get into. Where, you know, now I would say like, Stop Go Love is, is that middle tier. You know, we, we do a lot of weddings in that kind of middle tier. And then, you know, we're trying to get to that upper echelon of luxury and ultra luxury. And wedding. it's a different creative process. Yeah, yeah. Like, different problems, it doesn't, way different client. It could, be, it could be the same client who just doesn't value the video as much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. We've shot tons of very high-end weddings and very successful people who just are like, yeah, I just, they don't, they don't want to spend 10 grand on a wedding video. They don't care about it that much. They want it to be good. They want it to be professional. Yeah. I, 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 that product is, I, I would consider it accessible luxury. Yeah. We make a product that it's not for everyone. I don't think most couples can afford it mm -hmm. or would want to afford it, but it is for, 
it's it's for a larger range of people. And this next product we're making is for people who want really really value cinema. Yes. They yeah. really that's the couple we want. We yeah. want a couple that really wants to help us make a certain thing. Not just someone who wants us to show up and document their day and be a fly on the wall, which both are good. We really value both customers highly. But now we're looking going, oh man, this is really risky. It's it's kind of there's a lot of stuff, financial risks we're taking. Yeah. Um, I don't feel as much um, exposure with those financial risks personally. I don't feel like I'm putting myself out there with that. Yeah. But it is risky. Yeah. Well, so I, I think before we really dive in, I, I think it's important, you know, defining what creative risk is. Cause, and, and I think it's, it translates no matter what your um, – wedding profession is if you're yeah. a videographer like us we're just talking florist, in terms of if, our own experience but yeah completely maybe. so so what, what's what's i guess a, a creative risk that you can see you know in the wedding industry how, how would you define that i think well, what's one of the ways that you would define that i think first of all if you're an entrepreneur that that's just a risk yeah anyway so putting your money and time into something with no necessary promise on return mm -hmm. typically that's very. That's actually risky, even if it doesn't feel risky. If you have a stable business, so I would kind of encourage you to evaluate. If you think you're not risky, but you run your own business, you are taking a big risk. You're running your own business. I think most wedding professionals are taking risks all the time when they do what they really want to do, mm -hmm. with no promise of a market reward or a peer reward. You know because. I was looking at someone's work the other day, and, and, I, and I had a high opinion of it. I thought he did a good job, right? And I was like, oh, this is really good. He's really skilled. I didn't really evaluate any risk in there. Yeah. I was like, well, clearly, like, obviously, it's not risky to be amazing and release amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, if you're amazing, why is that risky? Yeah. Like, everyone. But I know there are risks. I know if I got behind the scenes and looked into his business and looked into how he arrived where he is now as a creative professional – that he was making all kinds of decisions to do what he really wanted to do, even though it made more sense to do something easier. And so I think the biggest risk you're going to take as a creative professional, if you're a florist or a wedding planner or whatever, is to do something that's different than the market. Mm -hmm. Like where they look at a, and it seems like it's not a risk because you're like, oh, no one's making this. Yeah. I should go and make this. And a lot of times it, in hindsight, it wasn't a risk. The market wanted it. But Somebody has to blaze that trail. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I think, look, think about Jose Villa, right? Yep. Where he was, I mean, when he kind of broke through. Well, and, and I think this kind of pairs into another question that I had, which was who are the people that are taking creative risk? You know, you look at people that are, have actually taken risk in, in hindsight, like Jose Villa, you know, they're industry leaders now. So yes. the people that I think are really, taking those risks are the people that are in the forefront. I look at like brothers Martin, uh, as a filmmaker, I'm like, wow, they, they really do a lot. You know, they, well, the, they even started the a new type of editing, you know, they, they're, they're, they're always like, you know what, this film, this is a really cool couple. I'm going to talk to them and we're going to do a 15 minute long edit as opposed to an eight minute long edit, because this is the product that I actually want to create. And in the process, they revolutionize the industry. Everyone tries to copy them afterwards. The people starting think that they're doing a lot of taking a lot of creative risk because they're really just picking up a camera and, and going out and you know shooting a wedding, um, which to them it's all new. It's all creative. Yeah, I mean, and, and you are like you are taking a risk. Yeah, you're putting yeah. yourselves out there. You're work even trying to emulate someone mm -hmm. is a risk because you might suck at it. Yep. So, but regardless. Yep. But but you know at the end of the day uh, I think that the people who are really taking a risk are the people that probably have something that the most to lose right so um, you know someone like uh, Brothers Martins if they were to do something super risky and then everyone was like oh that's not very cool like that's a big risk that, to them like because they're trying to well do, it's what like do much more education I think and and you know who the you peer are risk. determines probably the riskiest people right now we don't know who they are. Because mm -hmm. they're yeah. taking risks and they haven't become those industry leaders, you know they ha they haven't arrived where sure. these other people are. But everybody who has arrived as an industry leader in the different <clears throat> whatever, if you're a wedding planner, whoever these people are, like th at one point 
they were doing things with no promise of what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, and they were being true to themselves and they were being true to their vision. Um, and then they, you know, it worked, it worked, you know, I'm sure a lot of other people. And I think the key with creative risk, and this is where I would want to start is to me, risk is when you're true to yourself and you do something that might, you might not have a template for, Mm -hmm. you just do it because you think it's the right way to do it. And, especially when other people are telling you not to either passively by just giving opposite advice or actively. But when you take that risk, you open up the opportunity to carve out your own place. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, it it really comes down to what are your goals Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's little risks and then there's big risks. And and I think it depends on your goals, but at the end of the day, I mean, I want to be, not, I want to be the, the best I can be. Yeah. I don't care if people go like, oh, he's an industry leader. He's amazing. I want to copy this person. But I want to live out the most possible that I can live out in terms of being a creative. I don't want to limit myself. Isn't yeah. that what it's about is like continuing to explore and, and grow? And yeah. Eat. I think I think we have an interesting perspective because we are so team-based, so – you know, we see individuals doing creative things, but for a lot of people, I don't think it's a decision that they're going to make like, oh, we're going to make this t- creative decision. You know, when we do something, it's, hey, I've been thinking about this. What do you think? We bounce it off of each other and then we bring it to the team. You know, it's 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 not just like we're on site and I'm like, well, you know, I'm going to reposition my lights, which is, you know, for most people, that's their version of what creativity is. But for us, it's very... Um, you know, we have to make a decision as a group and, you know, maybe I try something on site. I'm like, I like that. I'm going to bring that to the group. And then, so we're going to make a big group decision. And then, you know, like well, right now we're like, okay, we're going to make this big decision to buy all this gear. And so the financial aspect kind of comes into the creative yeah, decision I think, like, making with, as well. With creativity, you're talking about like creative, creativity and like your relationships. Mm-hmm. I think client relationships, um, partnership relationships with other professionals and then internal relationships. And then there's like creativity with what you make, yeah. whether it be, oh, these types of flowers are really underserved to clients and yep. I can do something really unique. I'm sure as a florist, it would be so easy to just go on Instagram yeah, and be like, yeah, everybody's doing this. Like, okay, okay. Well, that, that's how it is in every industry. You, you look at, you know, the preset community and photos and, and the LUT community and video. Oh, I'm just going to buy a Sony, you know, A7S and, and you know, go to town and, and apply this mm-hmm. preset and I'm just going to edit just like this guy is, you know, just copy paste. And I think that's on, that's how most of the industry is, which is fine. Like, that's how need, you learn. We need, we need a vein of like, this is the direction, this is where the industry is. And then, you know, once you get there and you're doing things, you can kind of branch out. Um, once you get those things established, Branching out and establishing kind of your own unique style is what the yeah. people who demand those the most stylistic, money do. R- yeah. Stylistic risk. And I think it really comes down to, like I said, there's those relationship risks. There's like creative, like product yep. risks. Yep. And I think then there's like business risks. Yep. And and you don't have to risk in all those areas to feel like you're risking. There might be some things that you're doing. You might be like, I'm going to create a really a product that's for everyone. Mm-hmm. Like Dunkin' Donuts makes one if you're not from the Northeast and you don't have tons of Dunkins, like Dunkins is it's too a, bad. If you <laughs> just to give you a picture of Dunkin' Donuts in the Northeast, I live a quarter mile from my my office, and I live a quarter mile from three Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> there's so many Dunkin' Donuts. We can like go any direction, yeah. but like Dunkin' Donuts makes one type of coffee. Mm-hmm. Right. And for and, and, and for them, that's not where they want to take the risk. Yeah. You gotta pick the spot where you're taking this. They're taking a risk on like their branding. I know some people in the coffee industry and how they purchase their coffee and how they formulate the, the, the roast and all these things. There's a lot of risks that are happening behind the scenes. And so they pick their spot where they're yeah. gonna get the most return. So if you're listening to this, I think it is important for Jared and I to kind of put out there that like it's not just like I'm going to pick the most unique flowers or I'm going to do the weirdest you know, arrangement with my wedding design or mm-hmm. I'm going to shoot 
a camera that no one else is shooting. Just it's not about just doing things that are different than other people mm -hmm. with what you release. There's other areas where you need to take risks. You might need to reach out to another wedding professional that you look up to. Yeah. And say like, hey, you know, what can I do to help you? And like knowing that that person could be like, look at your portfolio and be like, this person they suck. Like that's a risk. Yeah. 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 I um, I look when I think of. The, the risk that we're taking, like I look at the industry as a whole with video and I'm like, what, what is this industry missing right now? Right. So like what, when I watch people's wedding films, you know, and I, I really, I mean, I was on a thread the other day and somebody said, you know, I don't watch anyone's videos anymore. I only look at photographers work and they draw their inspiration from photographers. Um, but like, I look at it and I'm like, where, where what is missing in the, when I watch someone's video, why do I not want to watch this? Is it really just because it's played out or is it because I don't feel a human connection to people? Like, and, and that's kind of where I lean towards. I'm like, there's no human connection. So how can we establish a good human connection with these people that is different? You know, well, and, and like, will people let you? Yeah. Uh, will, yeah. Will they even let me get that close to them throughout the process? And I think, <laughs> You know, the way that we're going, we do think that people want you to get closer to them and create a unique product. It's just a matter of finding them. So now how do you find them? You have to be creative with trying to find them. So it's not necessarily like the creativity of like creating something new. It's also creative. And by creating like, something new, act, we don't right? we like we, the shots we get are not going to be these. No one's ever shot that before. And that's not in our goals. Is to shoot something no one's ever shot yeah. in a way that no one's ever shot it. Yeah, it's like there's only so many. There's obviously somebody who's gonna create some new style mm -hmm. and do something interesting, um, but that's not the only way to be creative. And yeah. I think if you can, I just expand think with video, we we can really, we can be probably more creative. There's just more avenues to be creative. There's so many uh, things you have. Yeah, so many moving parts. Like yeah, there's a lot that you can do. That's. Um, it's, it's a little bit more open-ended. Like I look at like florists and I'm like, there's a lot of things you can do, but it's product, right? It's not just like for, for us, it's our time. Like I can go out and just spend my time and, and, you know, grab some friends and work on getting some different lens flares that I like or something like that with the floors. It's like, Oh, you have to buy all this product. Like the, the creative risk is more expensive. I feel like. Um, or just using non-trendy flowers or yeah, yeah, or less flowers or you know, I know some florists who work with like a lot of um, field flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have a they have a vibe and a, and a thing that they're trying like to do. foraging. Like yeah, the just people. all kinds yeah. of interesting stuff like that. I, yeah. I, I think in any industry though, the more that you expand your definition and evaluate how many risks and how creative you're really being. Mm -hmm the more you will have opportunities to grow your business. Yep. Because when you look at it as a professional and you're like, I need to be creative with my relationships, creative with my product and what I like the thing I give to people mm -hmm. and then creative with um, the finances and the systems mm -hmm. and like the logistics part and even like creative with your time. Yeah. Like when yeah. I think about Stop, Go, Love, Stop, Go, Love, if you're listening and you're new to this, is a company we own. We... We're, I think somebody who saw us derogatorily would refer to us as a volume brand. Yeah. I have never considered us a volume brand. I've considered us a boutique brand who does volume. Yep. Um, and we do volume. And That's just semantics, Jay. Well, maybe. No, <laughs> I don't think so. It's like, I, I think our product stands up with people who do 20 weddings just as good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me so too. So no. when I, because we were like, how can we make, we never th set out to make a volume brand. We never set out to make a boutique brand. We just mm -hmm. set out to create a good thing. And then we had to be wicked creative with, okay, how do we get the team built up? Yep. How do we make sure our edit, how do I edit a hundred something weddings a year and make them all look like the same product? Mm -hmm. Which our answer was, by the way, hire a full-time editor, put them in the office. Yep. Right. I, I was originally turned off by the idea of like running a business, but the more we did it, and the more I started diving into the systems of it, the more I realized it really is all creative. Like, oh, my like gosh. A, a to Z, you know, whether you have a camera in your hand, and most of the times you don't have a camera in your hand when you're operating your business, um, we're being creative with, like you said, like the people that we have on board. We're coming up with solutions to the problems. Like 
problem solving is always creative. Yep. So, so, and that's mostly what you're doing as a business owner is trying to figure out better ways to fix problems. And, and that's being creative to me. And honestly, like, it's just as fun. I, I, I am enjoying kind of getting back into, oh, did I get another point for that phone going off? You did. We have a point <laughs> system of, uh, Dom did that. <laughs> Um, um, the person sitting in the room recording texted uh, me. Ah, so I get a point up on both of you guys. You're an idiot. Um, but yeah, like I've really enjoyed lately just picking up a new camera and trying a new style of shooting with, you know, that's a little bit more editorial and, and lifestyle. Um, so that that side of me is always going to really enjoy, um, you know, the creative journey. Um, but it's fun switching back and forth and having multiple um, things to be able to play with. How do you, how do you see being creative and trying new things work out when you actually have a client who's who's paying? Do you think it's fair for you to just be trying something new on on a wedding day or, or something that where where bride and groom is paying full price? So this is just only me. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel they're buying me and not the product. Sure. And I feel like the in in the couple say this too. They say, Oh, we trust you. Mm-hmm. We trust you. And so I do think if you're not selling a level of trust that requires that doesn't let you actually get away with trying some things, yeah. I think that you're maybe not selling correctly. That being said, I haven't really ever been compelled to do something totally different than what they bought. I don't consider that a risk, by the way. I consider that just that's just wrong. Like if mm-hmm. you were like, oh, I wanted to just literally just, I don't know, your whole wedding is time lapse. Yeah. I'm going to be on a GoPro the entire day, trapped in my face. You know, I'm really trying to strip down, yeah. down to what the essence of real photography is. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I'm just going to be rolling on GoPro yeah. on my head. Yeah. Because I want you to really have my perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 think, I don't think that that's being risky. I think that's just bait and switching people there's there's a certain there's a certain level of when you're on a when you're on a shoot and you're at a wedding you know doing things that might be out of the norm but still delivering your normal product like that's fine like testing yeah there has to be like a level i I don't think anything it's not risky to well it is risky because it's stupid it'll hurt you but to do something below quality yeah that then a person's expecting i think but i think like I look at a lot of photographers and they're like, oh, I'm trying this new flash. Like I'm going to maybe do a little bit of like dragging the, the shutter a little bit during yeah. the flash or whatever. And that's and then they develop, hey, I, I probably do like 20 of these and I just throw them in on top of what I currently do. The client's not going to look at that and be like, you know, what the heck? It might be different if they did that the entire reception for all the dancing photos. Like I remember when we first started like 2011, Emily and Derek's, I shot a lot of drag shutter. And uh, they were like, are there any without the drag? <laughs> like, they didn't know what to call it because they just saw these, like, swiggle lights, you know, going through the frame. And I was like, uh, there are a few, but, you know, I kind of did that a lot. And I, you know, I now look back and I'm like, I should have just shot more normal stuff, just safety stuff. Um, but I think if, if you're able to, to approach the day and maybe try something new um, without screwing your client, without doing something that's out of the norm. I mean, honestly, good, like... I- Maybe we should evaluate it this way because yeah. creative risk is about like I think every single project should – it's about being vulnerable, mm-hmm. really. It's like taking your ideas and putting them into every project. And if you're doing that, you're always going to be risking yeah. a, at least a little bit. Yep. And I think you should always be – because especially we all know weddings, whether you're doing photography or videography or planning a wedding or florists or DJing – that every wedding requires you to be creative because every wedding is different. Yep. And in every single situation, you'll have an opportunity probably to do something boring that you know the couple will accept. Yep. Or try to push the envelope and do something special. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've, there are plenty of times where I mail it in. Yeah. Where I'm like, meh. You and take the, the safe road. Totally. Yeah. It's like, I'm not saying it's good. I'm yeah. just, I know thinking back, you're like, for all these different factors that that you'll be like, I, either because you don't feel you can because mm-hmm. of time or something yep. or because you're just not having a good day. And then there are other times where 
you can actually really take those risks, and, and you really should be. Yeah. You really should be. Like, I, I, I look at the new product that we're doing, and I'm like, we actually are offering a monetary, you know, essentially a discount because we're like, we're going to try this new thing. We literally have nothing to show anybody. But because of our reputation with Stop Go Love, we're able to say, trust us. We're still going to charge you our highest package for Stop Go Love. But essentially what we are planning on giving you is probably worth three times that much. And that's what we're going to be charging a year from now, two years from now, once we shoot your wedding and we can show it to other people. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be different because of X, Y, and Z. This is how we're planning it. You know, we're essentially shooting at a loss right now to pay for the gear, to pay for the Airbnb, to be up, you know, in a place for multiple days at a time. And, you know, we're investing that that's, you know, the creative risk is, you know, in what we're shooting and what we're putting out there, asking somebody to trust us with our vision is super, you know, risky we didn't and have, vulnerable. Well, and, not only that, we didn't have to buy all this equipment to shoot at that rate. Yeah. Yeah. We could have just done the same thing. Without it. <clears throat> and Without so, the equipment? Yeah. We yeah. could have just said, oh, yeah, no, no, we're $5,000 and Jared and I are going to shoot it and we'll just yep. take our 5Ds and yep. call it a day. So anyway, I think we've kind of identified risk, yep. what we think and what it means to be creative, which yep. hopefully we've expanded that if you're listening. And we're not just talking about like how to shoot, although I think how you make your product is probably where most people have opportunity to be risky. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, let's talk a little bit about just what, it, why does it feel so scary to take these risks, especially ones that are, cause I get why it's scary to take a financial risk. Yeah. Cause you might not get the money back. There are times where you're like, I remember I was looking at, we're going to this, which if you haven't heard about it, it's pretty dope. It's a thing called a uh, vision quest and, um, it's going to be in Austin and it's an awesome filmmaker workshop. At least, hopefully, it's their first one. But I'm assuming it's going to be awesome because the people there are awesome. And then we're going to this thing, and I was watching the trailer for this, and I was like, for a moment, I was like, I kind of want to quit. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. What these people are making, I'll never be able I don't even know. Like, I've shot for years, and I've never shot anything that looked like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, do I know what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Am I good? And it's like those I think are the – that's vulnerable when you're like, no, 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 no. Okay, no, it's okay. It's an emotional reaction to risk, creative risk, is this feeling of can I do it? Am I good? Will people like it? It's like you're really – it's you. Yeah. And on those cooking shows, they always say, oh, I want to see you on a plate. They want like if you they'll have the guy make a food and they're like I don't think that was you on a plate I mm-hmm. think that you didn't show me who you were, mm-hmm. you know and I think that's, that's funny comes with creative risk is like it's this, funny that you would feel that way about those shots because I'm like I just look at them I'm like I can do all those shots but um, what I what is hard to me and where the risk is is getting a cl- getting a client getting a couple well that's what I mean it's, to to do certain things like and say the things that I want like documenting them in a way that's making like, them actually stand there having the time having good conversation that people care about and allow people to understand them more without them feeling you know uncomfortable in front that's the kind of stuff that's vulnerable and like hard and and giving them giving them certain direction like i look at a lot of like time lapse shots and a lot of those kind of shots i'm like it's just a shot the time lapse shot is not a shot i'm intimidated by well, yeah, but like, you know, time yeah. lapse with the drone or whatever, like it's, it's production, you know, the production stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, I could figure that stuff out. Like that's not as, as hard, but it's a storytelling aspect that I'm like feel a little bit more insecure. And I think that's to answer your I think the question you're getting at was, you know, why is it intimidating for us creatives? And, and I think deep down to so do probably, something that doesn't cost you money necessarily. It just feels it's yeah. personal. It's it's as a creative, you know. We're all insecure (laughs) is probably what it comes down to. And we worry about, you know, the art that we bring home to mom after kindergarten. We want them to love it. We want everyone's approval. Like we put something out there in the world. We automatically feel like everyone should love it. And Um, if they don't love it, it, they hate you. And and we've all encountered where, you know, people are just kind of like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Or if you put it on Facebook, people will shred you (laughs) and say it's awful. 
Um, so I think there's always that insecurity uh, as, as a creative. Everybody feels like an imposter, I think. Yeah. And, and also just I think people are more worried about when it comes to creative risk. People are more worried about what other creatives are saying than what their clients are actually saying. Yes. Like the clients will be like, this is the best thing ever. Probably no matter what. I think once you get into the ultra luxury world, it's a little bit different where they they are actually going to compare you to the best of the best because they chose you over those well, people. Well, and the people who refer you yes. are, are other creative professionals. Yep, yep. Like planners and all these people. So it does matter. It yep. doesn't... It, Maybe I'm wrong about this. In my experience running a successful wedding video business um, where no one really knows who we are, mm-hmm. it, it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like what other creative professionals, what other videographers and photographers thought about us, it didn't matter that much. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All that mattered is what our clients thought about us and the yep. people who hired us thought about us, whether, whether it's a wedding planner or a venue who yeah. got us referred. Exactly. But that but the but thing that's you fear changes. The, but the thing that most people fear is what other wedding creatives think about them and yes. the way that they're seen in the wedding industry and just like, you know, that's why people post things to Facebook and like, oh tell me what you think. Well, they're really you know, saying I can I rant a second? <laughs> when people post, give me criticism and then they argue with every bit of criticism, <laughs> I'm like what? It's so annoying to yeah. me. <laughs> it's like, so don't give you criticism. Or I saw someone post the other day something like, hey, guys, this is something I'm doing. Um, give me crit- criticism, but be nice. Yeah. yeah. No. What if it's terrible? What if I'm like, this is bad? Like, yeah. you don't tell a person that, obviously. But like when you tell a person how to give you feedback. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so no, it's so I, irritating. I wonder how... The entire industry is like if there's like a florist Facebook group. I bet they're way nicer than the videography one because it's just full of like photographers are way nerds. nicer than videographers. Oh yeah, photographers are like looks great, good preset, maybe, girl power. Maybe add a little bit of magenta and you know, or take take you know, uh, add a little bit of green and you know, it's gonna look like a film portrait. Like videographers are like, why did you export at sixty? FPS like oh, there's a lot of rolling shutter you know there anything yeah a lot of rolling shutter like you know it would have been better if XYZ like they just shred everything <laughs> <laughs> there's so many moving parts and technical things and at the core of like which is funny because most videographers at home that are shredding are probably typing from mom's basement <laughs> uh, yeah it's like yeah great advice from your 10 weddings that yeah, you shot yeah like um and your two years experience Thanks for thanks for the feedback. Bro. Yeah, um, but it, it's weird though because those are like you are thinking. Everyone's like I think if you're listening to this, you're not alone. If you feel this way, if you're cocky like Jared, he's more unique. Um, I I think when I look at stuff, I'm always like, can I do this? Even if you know that you can do it, mm-hmm. the feeling that you can't is enough to make you not. Yeah. I think a lot of people, when they look at being creative and being true to themselves and making what they really want to make and and taking those creative risks, they are in a place where they're thinking, will people like me? Mm -hmm. Not will my couples like me? Like, it's very, very personal. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's very vulnerable to do the thing that you think is right. And like, I know if I would have known about, if I don't think they existed when we started Stop, Go, Love, who? All these groups of people giving advice to video professionals. Like, I oh, don't, yeah. Maybe we would have. I, I don't remember it ever existing. It was just different. It was like the guys with the khaki vests. <laughs> yeah, we knew we didn't. And you know, we knew we didn't want to do that. Yeah. We knew that like we, we were like, all oh, these people are horrible. We hate these people. We don't want to be have anything to do with these people. And we we're just it's the total opposite of what we wanted. And to they do. were mean to us at all those wedding shows. So, <laughs> yeah, they were just like they didn't want us to be. There. We were the upstarts. Yeah. So we we're just like, screw these people. Yeah, we came yeah. in with like rebels. Yeah. And but I know that if I would have if it would have been developed the way it is now, mm-hmm. everyone would have told me work less, get paid more. Mm-hmm. Be, you know, oh, it's all about your art. You got to push yourself and all these things. And we would have not made the product we made. Yeah. We yeah. would not be as successful. Yep. Because they don't know our unique vision. Like they don't, they've never made what we've made. Yep. 
if I sit down with a lot of these guys and say, well, this is what I do, I'll tell guys who are way very successful that everyone has heard of how many weddings we shoot, and they're like, what? Yeah. How are you doing that? And yeah. if I show them the work, they're like, oh, it looks good. And they're like, we would have never made this. And yep. it's like, so I think some of it is like shutting out all the noise yeah. and doing what well, you think you want to do. I, Tarantino just made that movie um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I, I think about him and I can't imagine he watches a lot of movies, right? Unless they're like 70s watches, karate huh? movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He watches yeah. a ton of movies, but not a lot. Exactly. Of them. So that I he mean, watches what he likes. What, same thing with Wes Anderson. There's a reason why people like that, why their movies stick out so much. Is just they're not inspired by like The Lion King. They're inspired by art that they've enjoyed as a kid, and and you know maybe have grown up with a little bit, and maybe some in that same kind of genre. And, and they just combine mediums, the things that stand out to them, that mean something to them. And, and I think you had mentioned it before, doing stuff that's true to yourself. You know, when we were talking to Tiffany Vaughn a couple weeks ago, that's something she harps on a lot. It's just Elizabeth yeah, all the time. Every, everyone who's in a niche and doing something says, you know, stay true to yourself. You want the clients that work well for you. And, um, and that's great. And, and I think, like, I've really latched on to a lot of that stuff with – the new product that we're making because this new product, while Stopka Love is really like, we're like, this is for everyone. Like, you know, I'm not trying to cure my client with Stop Go Love. I want everyone. I want someone who can barely afford $2,000 and I want someone who can afford a $6,000 film. And if they're like, oh, I only have to pay $5,000 on a budget for six, great. Stop Go Love is a great solution for me. This product is client curation and it's, you know, staying true to myself because I'm trying to make something very specific. And if they can't jive with how much time that I need from this product, then they're not right for this product. You won't even make the, the product won't exist because no, it, it won't be it the product. Literally can't happen. Yeah. Can't happen without me getting exactly what I want. So, um, so I guess you know, and that and that's a risk too, right? Like by you saying, if you're not willing to do this, Huge I'm not risk. willing to take you. Huge take risk. Take the money, and and so you might get like two clients. <laughs> You know, uh, I well, think it's, and I and really quick, you might fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, like you, this is not like a fantasy where we say take risks and then eventually it'll work out and yeah. then you'll be Jose Villa. Yeah. Like no, a lot of us are gonna statistically, most of us are gonna take risks and then they aren't gonna turn out yep. the way that we want, and then you're you're gonna have to sit there and learn and problem solve mm -hmm. from that. And I think Look, one of the aspects of creative risk that I like is the ability to grow. Yeah. We, we talked about it too. Like most of the risks that you're going to take, even if it feels like a big financial risk or big creative risk, especially if you're just doing a creative risk, a lot of times it's not going to put you under. Like it's not like no. the creative risks that you're taking are not going to If you're to structured dive properly. Dive bomb your business. You're not going to start shooting lens flares a certain way and then people just stop hiring you. Like, you know, probably the thing that's more risky is the thing that you're throwing money at. Like right now with, with Huxley Film, what we're doing is we're throwing a lot of money at it because we're like, we want it to have this kind of look. So we have to shoot 4K and 120. We want to have, you know, certain color. Like, you know, there's a lot of, lot of money, a lot of time invested, like, we're pulling our lead editor off of Stop Go Love projects to work on this. And so there's a lot more we're, financial risk. We're going to be flying. We were just in Paris. We're going to be doing Italy. We're going to yeah. San Francisco. Like these are things that who knows if it's going to turn out. But even anything. for us, like we're like, okay, it's calculated. It's not going to put us under, even if it all fails. And, and honestly, like I think when you do this stuff, like you're learning – Mm -hmm. about what works and what doesn't work. So that's good. You know, yep. ta taking positive out of it, even if, and a lot of times it doesn't work out the way that you think. Like if you're like, I'm moving towards this, it might shift to oh, something different. I feel different. very certain like, that everything we think Huxley film is going to be is, it's not going to be. It's not going to be everything. It's, it's going to be, or it could be totally different in some ways. Completely. And like, we need to expose ourselves to opportunities to learn. Yep. And but you're just blazing a new trail. You're blazing a new trail. Who knows where it's going to go? You think the sign is telling you to go a certain direction. You follow it until you reach the next signpost, and you're like, oh, 
we got to go one way or another. Like, and it's neither of the ways that we thought we were originally going to go. So we have to go this direction. It's, it, being creative is a lot like going on a trip. Yeah. And it's like, you can plan where you're going to walk, but you can't plan the weather. You can't plan if somebody hits you in a car. You can't, there's so totally. many things outside of your control. Totally. And you could do everything right and still fail. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing I would tell everybody is like, if you're being creative, then you're being risky. And if you're risking, you're having an op, you're creating an opportunity to grow. Yep. Yep. And, and we talk about that a lot is growth and like learning. And a lot of people, they just are so paralyzed by fear, Mm -hmm. paralyzed by the insecurities that come into their head when they're looking at their business. Oh, could I build teams? Well, how would I do that? We're going to be talking to Francie with 42 North and they're doing this new venture, Maven mm-hmm. House. And I'm sure that we'll talk about it, but I'm sure that felt like a risk to them mm-hmm. to create something that was more accessible. Yep. And that's me putting and words in their mouth. it's a risk to their, 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 I mean, it just, I, I, I don't think so because I think it's actually like starting a new brand. Like I think about it a lot too. Like if we start these other brands that are associated with Stop Go Love, like how does that affect the stop go love brand? It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Like it either elevates it or or it diminishes it. Um, so it's it's definitely a risk. That's that's actually a big risk, and that's like a long term tectonic shift. You know, yeah, tectonic plate shift kind of thing. Like if we start this other thing, we have a whole another competing interest. Could one steal from the other? And like that that's an actual that's actually a big risk. Well, I feel like. And obviously you can do all the vetting and learning you want, but like, yep. I think being creative and taking creative risks, and, and the reason I brought up the failure part is because this is what I want to say. You have to take risks. Mm-hmm. And you will get, I heard a leader say one time, when, you, when it's no longer acceptable to be where you are, that's the only time you will take the risks necessary to get where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Yep. And when you move into that place in your business where you're like, I can't keep making the same floral arrangements. I can't. I'm so bored with this. I'm so I need to make more money. Yep. I have like whatever the actual condition is I'm in your business. That's when when you're so sick of it that you can no longer stay like and, and th- if you're discouraged, you're like, oh, I want to quit right now. I think I'm just going to get out of weddings. Yep. Try doing something risky before you do that. Mm-hmm. Try to make the business the way you want to make it, mm-hmm. and not, and not and not just um, bailing out mm-hmm. because it's probably some. You're probably just not doing what you want to do, mm-hmm. and that's why it's so unsatisfying to you. Yep. And it might fail, and then you can learn lessons and actually. And I know for me, that's what I'm looking forward to with Huxley is like, I'm going to expose myself to a new level of criticism. Mm-hmm. When we fail with Huxley, it costs us a lot more money. Yep. There's a lot of things about it that are scary. Yep. And but I'm also looking forward to those failures. Yep. Yep. Because I'm like I'm gonna have it's an Ivy League education is expensive. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my education. I don't want to be a person that's not willing to pay for my education. Mm-hmm. I want to be a person who's like I'm invested and I have skin in the game. And when when I fail, I want it to hurt. Mm-hmm. Like I want to take enough risk that when I fail, it hurts. Yep. And I walk carefully and I pay attention to what I'm doing because I know a lot of times when I'm shooting stop go love weddings, I could do that in my sleep. Mm-hmm. It's easy. I know how to do it now, and it's just I can do it and I can make people really happy very easily, and I don't feel it's not I'm not growing. Mm-hmm. I want to. Yep. I want to grow. I don't want to. I don't want to be this the person that I am today, tomorrow. Yep. So, I think that's the key, right? It's taking creative risks for a lot of people. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you know, no matter where you are, I guess in your your creative business, um, you know, I think I would encourage you to take that next step, and and whether it's trying new things this weekend at a wedding, or whether it's you know moving your you know, for a lot of people, I feel like the risk is charging more for their weddings, you know, hiring someone. Yeah. Hiring somebody. Um, those are, those are all risks and probably those are probably a little bit more business risks, but, um, you got to take risks. You got, you got to take that next step. If you're complacent, you're moving backwards. Somebody will lap you. Somebody. Yeah. I mean, I look at how many changes we've had to make just because 
the industry changes. Like the fact that now everyone is offering 4K. I'm like, well, I honestly, I don't know. I think I, I lost one wedding ever to somebody who was like, do you shoot in 4K? I was like, nope, 1080. They're like, can you shoot ours in 4K? I was like, nope. They were like, okay, we'll probably go somewhere else. I was like, great, that's fine. But, you know, I'm looking at it in the future. That was the first person. That was this year. Um, and I was like, well, maybe that's something we have to look at, shooting in 4K, even though there's been a lot of YouTube videos about the benefits of 4K for a wedding versus 1080 versus even 720. Uh, but I think um, that's the way the wedding industry goes. And if, if it's, it's a it's competitive disadvantage it, it to me. It doesn't matter if it actually it, yeah. is good if clients think it's good. Exactly. Then we might have to take that, that step and move forward on that. But, um, but yeah, creative risk is good. It's, it's vulnerable. I think it keeps you humble mm. as well, um, which, is, which is a good thing in our industry. I, like, I do enjoy that part about it. I enjoy oh, me too. that we're going to Vision Quest and we're going to be the least successful people there. Yeah, to no, the, me too. To them. I mean, maybe I, we, we will, maybe we won't. <laughs> oh, totally. Like, I'm going to just sit there and try to learn. I love being in that position again of, like, I don't know the most. Yeah, yeah. Like, putting yourself in that position of a student and a learner mm-hmm. and, like, always reinventing yourself. And yep. Like, it's, it, that is why we became creatives. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, like, if you're not doing that, if you're not exposing yourself to learning anymore, like, mm-hmm. you probably hate your job, right? Uh, yeah, you, you yeah. probably are so bored at this point, and and you just look at the guys. I mean, it, it was fun because I got to um, this year. I'm doing more photography, and I've gotten to work with a couple different <laughs> videographers, right? And this is rare because usually when we do photo, the only option for people they're like, oh, we're just gonna hire. I've never worked with another videographer. Yeah, so I get to see these people and just how jaded they are <laughs> towards the industry. Like, oh, people nowadays they don't value what's good i'm like oh, you're just not doing what people want right now man and and it, it's super you know bitter and jaded towards the industry but i i agree with you i think the people that aren't moving forward and, and trying to learn something new you know they're still burning you know blu-ray and dvd and they're mad that people don't want blu-ray and dvd <laughs> you're just yeah. like oh, this is all people want man sorry the biggest risk you're gonna ever take is to be honest with yourself yeah Yep. yep. It's like, is to really look. Being self aware is, is a big deal. Because, because, and, and really that's what it is, is like, I know when I look, I'm like, I'm not as good of a shooter as that guy. Mm-hmm. Which I'm not. I can't, <clears throat> I could do it, but I, I don't and I haven't. And you look and go, okay, I got to get there. Mm-hmm. You know, but until you, if you're on, if you're not honest with yourself about like why people don't like your flowers, why your bookings have decreased uh, with your wedding planning business, you know, why your employees are quitting. Mm -hmm. Does your financial model even make sense? Why you're losing money? Like those are vulnerable realizations you have to come to that take a lot of creativity and incredible vulnerability that will unlock a lot of freedom in your life Mm -hmm. and create opportunities for, to level up that if you don't take them, you will not have them. Yeah. Like it will go away. I even look at now I'm like, well, you know, why am I not getting out there and trying these things? And I'm like, I just don't have time. Right. And I think that's something that probably a lot of people who are running their own business, they just don't have time to go out there and take the creative risk. It's not even necessarily that they don't want to, or they're scared of it, but maybe they don't have the time, but the risk to you and the thing that I'm encountering is just like, well, how am I spending my time? How can I make this an important part of my schedule? Yeah. And just saying, I'm going to take the risk. And instead of me, you know, watching Netflix, I'm going to go out and shoot right now. And I'm going to answer email later on tonight. And I'm just going to move my things around so I can go out and play around with my camera and, and try some new things and just making a regular habit of that. Um, you got to sacrifice in some way, shape or form in order to take a risk. That, I mean... I think the definition is probably, you know, you have to give something oh, up of value. Totally. So, and, and you should be prepared. Yeah. Like, I don't mean taking a risk, like, and just being stupid yeah. and like throwing caution to the wind. Yeah. Like you have to have an exit strategy. Like you don't go to the moon and just be like, hopefully we, this is all the air we need. Mm-hmm, We've done mm-hmm. the calculations. We have no more oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know how they do oxygen in the moon, but <laughs> But like they have more than they need. Yeah, they have 
probably have contingencies upon contingencies upon contingencies. So we're, we're not advocating for being reckless with your business, but we are advocating for doing things that feel, um, feel creatively risky, that challenge you, that puts you in a place that you've never been to do something that makes you feel vulnerable, yep. that you really want to do. And like, just maybe it won't work. Yep. But you'll definitely learn something. Yep. Yep. You'll yep. definitely learn something. So, for sure. Well, that was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I like that. Hopefully, you know, you sitting at home, um, this is hopefully challenging to you. Hopefully, it's something that you are uh, experiencing yourself, or maybe you're trying to level up to, you know, the next uh, luxury wedding and trying to charge more for your, your films or, or just trying to do something that means something to you uh, creatively. Um, make sure, guys, that you're subscribing to the podcast, that you're giving us five stars on Apple Podcasts, all that kind of stuff. Um, give us a like on YouTube if you're watching it on YouTube. And comment. We really want to hear you guys' comments, what you think of the podcast, how we're doing. Um, this is a risk to us doing the podcast. I think this, this is a huge <laughs> risk. It's funny because I don't have a clue what I'm doing yeah. when it comes to promoting it. So I just... I'm like, oh, I don't care what these people think. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to post it because I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I don't know how people do this. And like yeah. every once in a while, you'll see somebody be like, and kind of annoyed at you. And I'm like, it's interesting when you're doing something like this because it's like, does anyone want to hear me talk about anything? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, why would anyone want to hear this? Yeah. I always think that. It's like, it's weird. There's... Everything great in your life comes through being creative and taking risks. Totally. And, totally. and so we do believe that those are some of our values and, and we want to be supportive of creative professionals and letting them know, like, if anything that we can add value to you, it's like, you're not alone. Um, not everyone is, just has it all together. They're all trying to figure it out and, and you're not alone. You're sitting there at home and you're wondering, should I quit? Should I keep doing this? Um, Get, talk to somebody, get a mentor, have a conversation, try to look at it from a different perspective. Yeah. And um, there's probably some creative risks that you can take that will unlock what your business, whether it be and how you shoot, how you arrange flowers and the product you deliver, or whether it be, hey, it's risky. I got to hire someone and they're gonna, it's going to change how I do my business. And if I don't do everything, will it still be me? Mm -hmm. That's risky for people. I don't know. There's a risk you need to take, and that's really going to be unlocking that will be the key to really getting to where you want to be. And I hope, hopefully that encourages someone, but also challenges them. Totally, totally. So thank you for watching and listening, guys, and uh, we'll check you out next time. Thanks, guys.